Hello and welcome to another video on number theory. So today we, I want to talk about some basic properties of divisibility. Now, if you feel a little bit rusty on the definition of divisibility, uh, please watch the video that I'm going to put there in the right up corner in the link so you can uh, review the definition of what we're going to talk about. Um, so this is going to be few of the properties of divisibility of course basic properties there are several of them i'm just i'm just going to highlight some of them that i think are important so let's look at the statement for the theorem so what we have here is let's say we have a b c x and y integers so all of them are integers the following statements are true so first statement is this if a divides b and B divides C, then A divides C. You can think about this one as transitivity. That's something that we're gonna talk about a little bit later in the video. So if A divides C, B, D, B divides, if A divides B and B divides C, then A divides C. So you can basically ignore the B here and use the transitivity to prove that, to check that A divides C. So that's the first property. The second property is if you have the, num the same number A, dividing two numbers b and c that number a also divides this combination x times b plus y times c this is what we call a linear combination between b and c so if a divides a number b and the same number a divides a number c so a the number a divides any combination of b and c and the last one, number three, is if you have an integer that is non-zero and you know that a divides b, that is equivalent to say that ka divides kb. So basically you can multiply on both sides by k uh, knowing that k is not equal to zero. Now, the idea of this video is to give you some examples first and the last part of the video is a proof of the second part of the second uh, statement. Uh, the reason I'm not going to prove 1 and 3 is because they're going to be very similar. So the idea of proving these basic properties of divisibility, the ideas are very similar to the ones I'm going to show you in this video. So let's start with some examples first. So the first example is this property, property number 1, uh, the one that I said it was transitivity. As you can see, you can... Uh, See why is called that way. A divides B, B divides C, so the A divides the whole C here. So you can skip the B here, basically. So let's see an example. Now recall that an example is not a proof. So what I'm giving you here is an example. Giving an example does not prove the statement. A proof is something different. Okay, so let's see. So we know that four divides 12, because 12 is a multiple of four, it's three times four, and also 12 divides 36. Now remember that this vertical line here means divides, which is an statement. So think about this is two statements that are here. This is the A, the A is four, the B here is 12. So we are matching here the statement number one and C will be the number 36. So by transitivity, assuming that we already know that this is true, of course it's true, but we haven't proved it yet, then A will divide C, so that means that A divides 30, uh, 4 divides 36. So that's just an example of that property. So that's transitivity. So A divides C. Now let's look at the second property. This is the one we're going to prove in this video. So let's look at an example. So this is what I call a linear combination because uh, this here, this expression here, xb plus yz is what is called commonly in math a linear combination of b and c with this weight x and y. All right, so let's look at an example. Again, an example is not a proof. Uh, so let's look at the statement. So we have the same number three here. That will be the number a that divides two other numbers, in this case the number 6 that we label B and the number a 9 that we label C. 
So that means that 3 will divide any combination, the number 3 will divide any combination of 6 and 9. So by the theorem, we can get that 3 divides 6x plus 9y, a combination of 6 and 9, for any integers x and y. So you can replace x and y here by any integer, and this statement will still be true. Just to give an example, let's say we choose some numbers x and y for this statement. So 3 divides 6x plus 9y uh, to make it uh, true. So let's say, for example, we take x equals to negative 12 and y equals to 13. This is just an example. You can replace x and y here by any integer, and the statements will still be true. So if we replace it there, and then you do the computation, 6 times negative 12 plus 9 times 13, you do that and you get 45. So 3 divides 45. So that's an, ex an example of the second property. So what I'm going to do now is prove for you the statement. So the statement that is the, we can have that A divides B, a divide C and so the number A will divide any combination of B and C with integers X and Y. Now the way this proofs go is you always go back to the definition of divisibility. So we're going to use that definition for divisibility. So let's start with the proof. So because this is an if then statement, so if this expression here is true, then this one is also true. So we're going to assume that a divides b and a divides c, and assuming that, we will prove by some argument that a divides this x, b plus y, c. Now, this is where we're going to use the definition of divisibility. So assuming that a divides b and a divides c, what does that mean? So the first thing is this a divides b, remember by the definition, uh, it means that b is a multiple of a, an integer multiple. We can write that down like this, b is equal to a multiple of a, k multiple of a, where that k is an integer. Let's call that equation number one, or that is statement number one. The same thing we can do for a divides c, let's write down the definition, what this means in terms of the definition. So that means C is a multiple of A. So let's look at what that says. If we translate it into the definition, that will mean that C is T is a multiple. It doesn't have to be the same K necessarily. So it's another multiple because B and C are generally not the same number. So I could have another integer T here. So C will be T times A for some integer T. And I'm going to call that number two. Now, so that's what we have so far. Whenever you're doing this type of proofs, you always want to write down, probably in a separate piece of paper, what your goal is for the proof. So what is our goal? Our goal is to prove this statement right here. So that will be our goal. Our goal is to prove that A divides XB plus YC. Now, rewrite that goal in terms of the definition to make it clear so how you will manipulate these two statements one and two to arrive to this kind of conclusion. So this statement a divides xb plus yc it is the same as proving or writing down that xb plus yz is equal to some integer times a. If we can achieve this from one and two we'll have prove this statement that we want to show is true. So this is our goal. This part here is not part of the proof. It's just to remind you that that's what they, we are going to do. Okay? All right. So let's see how we combine those two things. So first thing you know is we have an XB here and we have a B here. So we should probably multiply this whole number one by X. And the second one, we have a YC here, and this is a Y. So we should probably multiply the second one by y. So let's do that. So we're going to multiply the first statement 1 by x and the second statement by y. So let's see what we get in that case. So then if multiply on both sides here by x, that's something we can do because 
if you have an equality, you can multiply on both sides by the same number, and it's still true. So xb is equal to xka, which is what we have here. Let's call that number three. And the same, uh, similarly, we're going to do it for the second one. We multiply on both sides of this equality by y. So we will get yc equals to yta. Now, what we want is xb plus yc. Now, from three and four, uh, you can guess that because we want that, then we should probably add together these two uh, statements, three and four. So we can add them side by side, and that is okay to do because if you have two equalities, you can add them together side by side, and you get a statement that is also true. So let's do that. So if you add here on both sides, three and four, what do we get? So we're going to get this following. We have xb plus yc equals to xka plus yta. Now remember that our goal is to check that xb plus yc is a multiple of a. If you look carefully here on the right hand side of this equality, you can see we can factor out an a from there and that's the next step. So we factor out the a and so if we factor out the a we get xk plus yt here in this parenthesis times a. Now, the proof will be done if this expression is equal to an integer times a. So we need to make sure that whatever you have here in this parenthesis is an integer, and in our case it is. And why is that an integer? Let's see why. So because this is an integer because x, y, k, and t, all of those four numbers are integers. That's all coming from our proof and the statement of the of the theorem. So all of this is an integer. So when you have integers, this expression here is also an integer. So that will prove that a divides xb plus yz. So that was the proof of the second statement. As I mentioned, the other two statements, so that will just end the proof. As I mentioned, the other two statements will be proved in a similar way. What you always want to do is you write down the definition of the visibility and try to to manipulate that definition so you can get to your goal. So let's remember again these basic properties. First one is transitivity, this one, number one. And then we have uh, the linear combination, that's the one we proved. And then we have this third case. Now there are many more basic properties of the visibility. And of course, we cannot list them all. Now, throughout the course of the course, in, in this uh, video lectures, every time I need to use something, I'm going to remind you of that property. So we cannot prove everything, of course, but we will prove the things that are probably the ones that give you the more, uh, more ideas on how to do the other ones. So the ones that are more important. So the one we proved was number two. So that's all I have to say for today. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we will discuss how you check that a number divides another. So that will be another type of video. We will do some computations and we will see theoretically how to check for divisibility. So again, thank you for watching. Take care and good luck.